Celebrity chef Mario Batali has been the defendant in a criminal trial this week, accused of groping and kissing a woman at a bar in Boston back in 2017. The 32-year-old accuser, Natalie Tini, claimed she was trying to take a selfie with Batali at the time of the alleged incident. During her testimony on Monday, Tini described what she claimed Batali was doing with his hands while off camera. In, in many of those, those photographs, you can see Mr. Batali's left hand pulling her face. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us what his right hand was doing? Yep. So his right hand is all over my breast, all over my rear end, um, in between my legs, um, gra grabbing me in a way that I've never... <laughs> I've never been touched before like that, like like squeezing in between my legs, squeezing my to pull me closer to him, like as if as if that's a normal way to grab someone, just between the legs to, to pull them towards you. Now, the problem for the case is the photos didn't show it. And she was one of only two witnesses called in the case. Her friend was the other. The photos, which were not made public um, to protect the accuser, show Batali to be heavily intoxicated. Prosecutor Nina Benelli argued that the accuser's account was enough to prove it. We saw pictures from that night of the victim and of the defendant in those selfie pictures. And from those pictures, it's absolutely undeniable that on April 1st, 2017, the defendant was drunk and aggressive, grabbing and kissing all over Miss Tini's face. That, at least, is plain as day in the pictures. Now, along with that face grabbing and kissing, we learned what was going on below the camera frame. The defendant groped Miss Teeny with his other hand, putting it on her breast, her butt, and her crotch. He tried to pull her into him more and more as he sat on his bar stool and she sh stood there, just trying to get a good fan photo. The kissing, the pulling, the groping, she never asked for it, she never wanted it, and she never consented to it. But most important for the defense were text messages that the accuser sent. A friend told her she should, quote, play up the story in order to get money out of Batali. Tini replied, quote, of course. Tini also texted another friend that she could, quote, hopefully get $10,000 for photos. And with that and other credibility issues of the accuser, Judge James Stanton didn't think the prosecution made its case. In his announcement of the verdict, he pointed out that not only did the photos not back up Teeny's claims, but also that there was a three-minute gap between two sets of photos, which left the judge to wonder why, if Batali was doing what Teeny claimed, would she go back for more photos? The pictures tell a thousand words, and the complaining witnesses uh, image in these uh, photographs. Specifically, it was Exhibit 2, pictures 5 and 6, which showed the uh, separation between the complaining witness and the defendant, Mr. Batali. Uh, but her reaction and lack or lack thereof to the alleged uh, assault is telling. As I mentioned, uh, the visibility of the flooring, the tile flooring between the complaining witness and the defendant indicated a separation and contributes to um, reasonable doubt. Significant as well is the three minute delay. The photographs, a series of photographs in that exhibit took place at 12.37 a.m. And then again at 12.40 a.m. There's a three-minute uh, lapse of time. And um, during that time, it appears that, uh, that the selfies were reviewed or retaken or plans were made to retake the uh, selfies. This is all allegedly as a serious sexual assault was happening. Joining us now is Terry Austin. She's host and legal analyst for Law and Crime Network, which I founded. Terry, thanks so much for coming on the show. We appreciate it. I'm going to ask you the question I was asked on Good Morning America this morning, which is, were you surprised by the verdict? I said no. 
I didn't see you on Good Morning America. <laughs> Sorry, I missed you. But I am not surprised by the verdict either. I think that the prosecution, the Commonwealth, put on a terrible case. They only had those two witnesses. And the worst part of their case, obviously, was the credibility of their star victim. And so that was a case I think the judge rightly decided. It was one of the fastest cases I've ever seen in two days. And I think it was a smart decision on the part of Batali to say, no, I don't want a jury. I'll take the judge instead. Great and, move on his part. And also for Batali not to take the witness stand uh, in this case. Um, you know, I thought one of the most important things was that apparently the accuser had said that after this incident, she said, I'll never go to another the Mario Batali restaurant. And then they found a credit card receipt of how she had gone back to a Mario Batali restaurant after she said that. Absolutely. I think that if she was really afraid and she didn't want to run into him and it was so traumatic for her, she could go to any other restaurant. I mean, the prosecution did argue that what should she do? Should she change her life? Should she go other places? Well, the answer is if she really was emotionally distressed, if she really had this traumatic experience, she would be going other places. She would have sought medical treatment. She would have done a lot of things differently. As it turns out, she wasn't afraid. She's still standing there laughing as she's taking the pictures. And the judge pointed out very well the fact that there was that three minute gap. If in fact he was molesting her, she would not have gone back to do the pictures with the live motion. So, so many things pointed to the fact that she really had not been assaulted. One of the things that struck me, Terry, was that the judge here wasn't just saying, well, you know, it's a high burden and uh, they couldn't prove it beyond a reasonable doubt. He kind of went after the accuser. Let me play another piece of sound from the judge. This is uh, number two. This court is the sole judge of the credibility of the witnesses who testified in this case. The complaining witness has significant credibility issues. Those issues were highlighted in her testimony. Her conduct as a sworn juror in, a, in another uh, case in a criminal matter in Middlesex Superior Court was egregious and it was offensive to the rule of law. The testimony about her scheme to evade a $200 gym membership fee by creating a fictitious legal document is indicative of that uh, lack of credibility. These issues these were just two of the issues, but they were significant in the mind of the court. And they support the defendant's contention that her motive was financial gain. You know, there was this other incident he talked about, about her when she was a juror. She tried to get out of jury duty by saying she was clairvoyant. Uh, and then when she served on the jury, she actually violated all sorts of court orders and was actually held in contempt of court. And Dan, I think you hit it on the head. That is the issue that really perturbed the judge. He said it was egregious, and he's correct. He didn't like the fact that she lied about trying to not pay the gym membership and all of these other issues. But he sits in a court of law, and I think he was particularly upset that she had the nerve to lie and that she had the nerve to not follow the court's rules. So I think it was really a great job that the defense got that yeah. in because there's no guarantee that you're going to get all that kind of evidence in front of the judge. Yep. But that one particular point, I think, yep. really set the judge off, and that's mm. why he criticized her so highly. Mario Batali found not guilty. Terry Austin, thank you so much for coming on. Appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Coming up, thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.